of legend. He's been doing this for a while. Mr. Al Bonstig. How you doing, brother? Get himself off me. Hey, I'm good, bro. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. It's my honor, man. Did I did I pronounce your last name right? Bonstig how you, is how you pronounce it. Bonstig? Okay. Al Van Bonstig. I was like, I hope I didn't butcher that, but <laughs> you were you were right there, buddy. <laughs> so some quick questions, man. And then uh, you know, just so you guys have a recap that haven't watched these videos. We do the live role play for a reason. There's lots of different ways to do sales, but if you're new, doing it your way and, and trying out stuff that doesn't work is the bad way to do it. What you want to do is learn to copy and repeat success the agents that are already being successful. And Al is a killer at this business, destroys it all the time. And so we have different guests on every single week and uh, they give us their styles of how they present and exactly what they're saying so you can copy and repeat it. Do not do the R and D, the research and development yourself. These videos are for experts to get on here that are making lots of money, protecting lots of families, giving you tips of the trade so you don't have to fall on your face and make those same mistakes. So we'll start off with a little bit of questions in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this live, which is the smarter move, so you can ask questions to these experts, put some uh, questions in the chat. We will get to those after the uh, after we do the, the live role play, and then we'll start with some quick questions. So it's gonna be exciting. Stay tuned till the end, and uh, go back and watch these over and over again if you want to be out because he's an expert. All right, buddy. So some quick questions. How long have you been in the business for? Thirty years. Thirty freaking years. So we got a we got a, a legend on our hands here because I thought I was I thought it was the old book, and I've been doing twelve. Okay. And then what's the most families that you've protected in a month? I think we we had counting some annuities and stuff. We were up in the fifty range, but I, I think on on the life side it was probably in the thirty five. Nice. Okay. And then how much were you investing weekly in your business to buy the the request for help from clients? Yeah. So I've recently increased the numbers because I've got several people on my team that are just like ripping it right now, and um, and their lead flow. You know, it's about lead flow. It's just trying to get it up. So. Right now, I've recently increased it, and we're probably sitting at around uh, three a week. Nice. Okay. So spinning, spinning the three k to to get yeah. up to you know those numbers of yeah. And and I'll just tell you too, time. Ryan. My my ROI is not the greatest compared to some. My my average is like two hundred seventy five percent. That's that's the number. So it's somewhere between two and three. But I don't know any business where you can. Um, get a two or 300% rate of return. Yeah, I mean, most businesses to be like a really amazing business, we take say Apple computers and they're like, they're the most profitable company in the entire planet and their ROA is 60%. So, yeah. you know, it's funny, like sometimes with the way we look at this, it's like, I don't know, man, if I just spend a thousand dollars on leads, what if I only make 2000, like make write 3000 and make 2000, it's like, you made two grand. Like what if you what what if you only made fifteen hundred? Yeah, I mean I don't know I mean, what what a drug dealer would make. Like that's supposed to be a pretty profitable business. Like what two hundred percent ROI, Pablo Escobar? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I yeah. mean I use analogies all the time, and that would be something like the restaurant business, car dealerships. Um, those are all fifteen to twenty percent. They're not two hundred to three hundred percent. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of crazy that we have so many people like, oh man, I love cooking. I'm gonna open a restaurant. Like, it only, it's gonna only cost a million dollars for me to open. I'm not gonna make any profit for five years. Also, I can eventually get to a very profitable restaurant that's earning twenty percent. Right. <laughs> and then you're you're like, I don't know, three hundred is really not that good. So, yeah. so you know. For me, I think it makes your job easier and you can kind of contest this out, but you know, I would rather spend $20,000 to make 40,000 and I make 20 grand than spend, you know, uh, two grand to make 12,000 and make 10 grand. Cause at the end of the day, I want to make 20 grand <laughs> over 10 grand, right? So if I spend more money and my profits higher, my profits higher, I'm still making more money, right? So who cares about the ROI? They're stated here a lot, and the, the there's way more risk and then not investing enough money, as opposed to you know, uh, investing a decent amount. Um, I tell new agents when we're bringing them on that don't even I won't even bring them on unless they can start with at least a thousand to fifteen hundred. Because if we're doing telesales, you got to have at least five or ten states to gather enough lead sources, 
right? So that's 500 bucks just in, in non-resident fees. Okay. And then, but if you do this right and you take a thousand dollars, then, um, you know, you, you, you're going to give yourself enough chances in order to get through the learning curve. So just to back up a little bit, you know, I was convinced that I could do the telesales. I dabbled in it through Zoom, doing some annuity business that way. And, and then when I came up to North Idaho, I've been here a couple of years now. Um, there's no people here. So it was, it was either, you know, travel, right? Which I really didn't want to do. I don't want to do that at my age and, or at this stage of my life, I should say. I'm in great shape, all that kind of stuff, but I just, I don't want to do it. Um, so I, I was convinced in my own head that I could do the telesales and make it work, but I ha added more states. I probably have 40 states now, um, focusing on probably 10, uh, maybe 12. Um, but the first month I broke even. First few weeks, I broke even. Then I doubled my money, and now I've kind of settled into where I'm. Like I said, I'm doing about two seventy five to three hundred percent ROI. I love it. And then what made you kind of switch to where you're like, you know what? I've been doing face to face for so many years. Let me try something different and try to work from home in my pajamas. Well, I, I I am disciplined. I actually get dressed every day and actually put on shoes. I even take off my slippers. I just think it's part of the mindset for me. Okay. Um, and, and Sean talks about that and I don't want him ever calling me up and saying, Hey dude, show me your slippers. You know? So I, I make sure I get dressed every day. It's just a mindset thing, but yeah, it just, it was, a it was a, first of all, that we had plenty of people doing it. So the first, when this first came out, I called somebody, Andrew turned me on to him and he was, he was doing these telesales from Columbia. Okay. He was in Columbia calling people in the United States and writing like 20 her up in 20 families. Okay. So I'm like, okay, well, I know I can do it. I just got to get through the learning curve. I had confidence because of my experience and the and, and just being in the business for so long that I could do it. I just had to get through that learning curve. That's all. Yep. I agree too. I mean, the first, first couple of weeks I started off is just because I was not used to it. Right. It felt like I was starting out face to face again. I'm actually going to Columbia for a week uh, in November. I was like, you know, why yeah. don't I take advantage of this? I can go get an Airbnb and work from anywhere. You know, as long as, if, if, unless I want to work like in the middle of the night, you know, over in Europe or something. But pretty right. much you were in North, North, North and in South America. We're kind of in the right time zones. So we can get this done pretty, pretty efficiently. So right. I, think that, I think that's awesome. Now, what would you say to a new agent that maybe is watching this and they're like, you know, I really want to start this. This sounds so cool, but I got 200 bucks to start my company with. Yeah. So I do one of two things. Now we have this new plan. Okay. Whether you guys are embracing it or not, um, where I'll have a conversation with somebody. And I, when I'm, when I'm making my recruiting calls, I'm very uh, forward, very direct, uh, taking control in the interview. And I uh, will ask them flat out. I do a mini BDM when I'm doing those, by the way. Um, and I can get that done in about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and so I will ask them, what's your current financial position? After already asking them, what kind of money are you making? What kind of money are you, do you want to make in a perfect world? And if, and if they say, well, I'm okay. Or I say, well, let me ask you this. Do you have any savings account? Or you live in paycheck to paycheck. I have a little bit of savings. Okay, well, then I can go there and I can offer them a 100% comp and they invest in their own leads. Okay, but if they don't have a lot, but I like them, because again, I still make these recruiting calls. I don't have a recruiter. I make the calls because after making thousands and thousands and thousands of calls, I want to know who I'm talking to. I want to know that I'm going to get along with them, that we mesh. Uh, personality wise, I want to get an indication of their work ethic, that sort of thing. So, and I had a couple of this, this last week where um, they seemed like they were uh, ambitious, just didn't have the total resources. So we'll start them at 75% and I'll invest in their leads for a season. Okay. But I flat out tell them and set realistic expectations that this is not a forever deal. This is for a season. This is for a period of time a month, uh, probably at the most, maybe six weeks. And at that point in time, they should be uh, transitioning over to, to start to invest in their own leads. Then we'll work on getting their comp up. Yeah, you know, in my experience too, you know, we've tried a whole free lead program at one of my other agencies I had before. And the ROI was re re 
ridiculously low. Um, so it wasn't profitable, wasn't good for the agent, wasn't good for me, wasn't good for people investing. Cause you know, you, when you spend your own money on something, you're going to take it more seriously. That's getting in the game, man. Yeah, exactly. So I, I've just learned the hard way. I've experimented with free leads a lot for agents and I've always seen the money be wasted and the clients not be served to the best ability. So I'm just a big believer that, you know, give the higher comp out and let the person that wants to go to work earn that higher commission. Way better, way better if they can put their own skin in the game and invest in their own leads, for sure. If they, if they understand the mindset that this is a business, this is not a job, then everybody's going to be better off. Yeah, just trial and error, man. I made, I made lots of experiments and lots of errors, but it, right. it always works out better for everybody. Give them, and that's I love that structure, FFL. Give, them, give people high comp they deserve. And I started 50% paying for my leads. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy. People get, yeah, well, even here at family first life, I started at 80. So, and I've had yeah. my license for 30 years. So there you go. There I you go. My, yeah. I had to work my way all the way up. Yeah, that's right. And I, I, I think that's the way to, to do it, you know, earn, earn what you deserve. So um, let's get into some quick role play here. And then I know you guys, as we're going along, you know, ask some good questions in here. It's good to see Dr. B asking some questions. Um, Cause this guy's got a lot of knowledge. Um, but actually, before we go into that, what would you say is the, the number one mistake that you see new agents making when they first start and what causes them not to be successful in entrepreneurship? Uh, asking questions. Um, you can, I can get an indication right away of how somebody's probably going to perform. Um, the top producers that I, I have um, called me 15 times a day for the first two months. And I'm, I'm probably not exaggerating much. So Nat DiCarlo. Um, decided to do travel trips the first couple of months, wrote 30, uh, helped 30 families on those couple of trips that he went on, but he was calling me all the time. And then he, he writes now or helps 80 families a month all over the phone. Uh, Logan O'Brien, who's uh, probably going to end up at 95 to 100 families this month. He's 26 year old, live, lives in Seattle, uh, 100% telesales now. He called me 10 times a day for the first two months. Wow. I got a brand new guy that just started. He uh, started this week and he he uh, helped, uh, I think, seven or eight families this week and worked like three days. He, I was on and off the phone with him a lot. Yeah. So, so that asked a lot of questions. If you're tenacious and you want to learn, you're going to ask your, uh, whether it's your upline, okay, your manager, or calling me outside. Or somebody else. I mean, I, I call Stephen Yee. I call Andrew. I call Grady. I call Ch Cheerio. I call whoever I need to talk to. Yep. And, and it's kind of funny, too. It's like you always tell your the new people, like, hey, we're here to help. But it's crazy how many people don't reach out for help. I mean, obviously, we're busy. We're not available all the time because we're sitting there protecting families as well. But we always get back to you, you know, because because right. that was something I never had to be told, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of naturally was like, well, this guy has the, has the answers. I'm going to try to get as much knowledge as I can. Right. So, um, yes. And that's the whole point of this guys, you know, watch it on YouTube. I will check it when we put it up. He'll answer questions, answer questions, answer, ask questions, you know, put them in the chat as we're, as we're going along, ask some good questions. That's why we do these calls was for you guys. <laughs> Me and Al don't really need it as much, but you guys were here for you because we all want you guys to be successful and, and find the wonders and, and amazement that we found in this business. So um, cool. Let's jump into some role play. So you're setting your appointments right now or are you? Um, so you I've, I've got both. So some leads I'm, I'm doing my own appointments and those would be a, a call to close if I can get a hold of them. Um, I do have a dialer uh, that sets up. Uh, most of my mortgage appointments and I send those to them, but I've got a mix to where it's just easier for me to call. So I do both. Um, they'll, they'll have access to my calendar and, and tee it up. Um, I would say that, and the appointments that they're setting, 60% um, are via text. Logan O'Brien, by the way, is setting a, he told me about 90% of the appointments he's setting are via text. What leads is he using to set those? Um, he's using, um, a couple of different sources like ha happy agent and a, and a couple others. I think, um, hall of fame, he's using hall of fame. Okay. Which and I know, Nina, I know Nina was using them. Okay. And then what's the text message like to set the appointment? Um, I don't have it right off the top of my head. I'm, you, you know, who Kirby is, um, Daniel Kirby. Yeah. 
Okay, we use we use his texting uh, format. I'm happy to send it to you. It's pretty oh, simple. I have, it. I have it on my website. I actually, yeah. actually, so it's just yeah, it's on. basically Kirby's stuff. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so yeah, it's just right on the FFLRush.com website, guys. And yeah, <laughs> I first heard that he was setting them that way, and I was like, what? So I got yeah. my yes, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so set them that way, guys. You guys can use Happy Agent Final Expense Leads. Um, sounds like that's been successful. You can use the CRM mailers, you know, age mailers are good, but any of that kind of stuff. So take me, and then when you're doing like a, when you have a new agent you hire, what do you recommend for leads for them to, to start off on? So they buy $500 of leads. What would you recommend? I, I try to get them onto some of the Facebook sources. If they have the financial resources to do that, whether it's guru, happy agent, or some of those, just so they have a few good quality leads. The other leads you gotta you gotta you gotta have your your game face on right i mean it is what it is the leads lead but you gotta have your game face on um so i just started a new campaign with the real-time leads that they've just introduced into the crm so we're going to try those out those are exclusive to you forever and um and i went ahead early and tagged some of those so we'll see how those do in my geographic area and because they are here i'll try to go maybe see some of those in person but i would try to get a better quality lead so i mean i like the the uh on the left hand column of the crm i definitely like the um instant internet leads with the benny those they're they're they know they put a beneficiary down they know what's going on um the silver call in leads are good in the middle section i've been telling my agents for a year that you better get right with the mortgage protection opportunities. That's gonna go down and it has. My lead flow for mortgage protection is down 70%. Well, it's down 70% but the economy is changing, interest rates have skyrocketed and the affordability for homes has um, gone down significantly. So if the interest rates go up, that means the payment goes up by two. That knocks out a whole bunch of people that can't buy a home. And if the interest rates higher, why are they going to refi? They're not. So get your mind right and say, hey, I better look for general um, life insurance leads and or final expense leads. Final expense leads are the reason I'm here anyway and wanted to build an agency because as, as a financial advisor for 30 years, I've been through multiple down cycles in the market. This, I believe, is the fourth in my career, and it's not going to be fun, okay? Well, why final expense? Because you got 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 a day. They're on a fixed income. They're, they're, it's not like they're going to lose a job. And the, and the two vendors you'd recommend is the Facebook happy agent runs, and then what else? Uh, Guru, and then on the CRM. And then if you can get on a, if you can get on a, um, Mortgage protection campaign, you can try it. There's Nashville, there's Concepts, there's LeadCo, there's a bunch of them. But the problem is the availability and what's available through those guys is probably minimal if not, if, you know, it's tight. It's definitely shrinking for sure. Um, cool. And then as far as those new exclusive leads, the CRM, those ones are what, 11 bucks and you just turn nine. on nine, nine bucks a piece and they're exclusive to you and never resold. Right. Okay. So lots of lots of good lead options, but you got to spend money to make some money. All right, cool. So let's take us through one of those nine dollar ones. Um, let's just say someone turned on a nine dollar exclusive, you know, campaign through the CRM. Um, and yeah. You do that through the CRM, right? Yeah, yeah. They as soon as, as soon as it's a campaign. So I set it as an example just to try it out. I got the uh, you can set a max. They're nine dollars. So I got I set it for twenty a week. Okay. And so 20 a week, if they're available, will come in. I'm in two small counties, so we'll see if they get there. But so far, they're coming in, um, uh, starting to. Um, and so it would just be, hey, Ryan, this is Al. I'm getting back to you about your recent request for information on some life insurance. You've, I've got your date of birth here as 2-27-1959. Uh, is that correct? That's right. Okay, cool. So I'm the local field underwriter here, and it's my job to determine which plan you might be able to qualify for. Now, what was the main reason that you submitted this request? Is there somebody that you wanted to protect, or what was the deal? Um, yeah, I just kind of was looking into it, wanted to see the cost on it. Okay, well, cool. So I'm a broker, so I'm affiliated with all the big name A-rated insurance carriers. So if I don't have something for you, then you might as well not fill out any more of these forms. So again, I've got you at 123 Main Street, uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Is that correct? That's correct. 
Okay, cool. And again, um, you're 59, right? Yep. Twice. Okay. Now, do you have any major medical issues that I should be aware of, such as cancer, stroke, heart attack, or diabetes? Um, yeah, I did have a heart attack. Okay. Hey, when was that, Ryan? Uh, it was about 15 years ago. Okay. So are you on any medications for that? Any um, <clears throat> uh, blood thinners, anything like that? Uh, no, I, I was for a couple of years after it. And then now I'm just on a blood pressure. Okay. And any other medications I should be aware of? Uh, just a, a cholesterol med and then a, a buterol for asthma. Okay. You've got some asthma. Okay. And um, no oxygen or anything like that? Nope. Okay. And did you have COVID? Uh, never had COVID. No. Okay, cool. And have you been in the hospital for any reason in the last year or two? Yeah, I did break my leg about three years ago, but it's all healed now. Okay, right on. And what about tobacco? You use tobacco, Ryan? Uh, no tobacco. No tobacco. And um, this next question is really important. Um, I wasn't doing it at the beginning, but it, it, you got to make sure you ask it. Uh, what's your height and weight, Ryan? Um, it's 5'9" and 202 okay so that's cool all right so and are you working ryan what do you do are you retired you working what do you got going on there yeah i'm still working right now um i'm an architect okay what what do you are, are you alone do you have a spouse what do you got going on there um yeah i'm married um so yeah she she's uh in the kitchen right now okay it, would she want to participate and hear what we got going on here that's okay. You can just give me the information. I can relay it to her. Okay. Well, were you wanting to, was the main purpose of this to protect for her or what, what was the main purpose? What was the main reason for calling? Uh, I just want to get, yeah, it's, if probably get coverage for both of us or so both protected. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, since she's right there in the kitchen, we probably ought to have her involved if we're going to look at putting some coverage on her. So why don't you grab her real quick? And then while you're there, can you grab a pen and paper? Yeah, yeah, let me see if she can join us. All right. Yeah, that, here. Okay, cool. You got a pen and paper handy? Yeah, I do. Okay, cool. Now, um, what's your what's your name? Your wife's name? Hi, I'm Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, awesome. Hey, do you have any major medical issues that I need to know about? Uh, let's say she doesn't. Say she's healthy. Okay, let's okay say perfect. And any tobacco? Uh, non-smoker. Okay, non-smoker. What about height and weight? Uh, we'll do five, five, and one forty-five. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now do you guys still have any, have any kids still in the house or anything like that? Uh, they're all grown up. All grown and out. Okay, and do you guys have any existing life insurance of any kind that would put a dent in this whole process? Um, we do have some good work policies. Okay, that's cool. Those are, the work ones are really good because they uh, they're either cheap or they're free. How much coverage do you have through work? Um, I think it replaces our income, at least on mine, for like two years, and then on my wife's, I think for three years. So okay. Well, again, the good thing about the ones through work is that they're either cheap or free, but the challenge is they don't go with you if you ever terminate service. So it's always nice to have something else on your own. Now, what are your what do you guys do for you're an architect? What is what is is it Jill? Yeah, Jill. Yeah, you know, what is Jill? What, what do you do for work, Jill? Um, I'm a hairdresser. Okay. And what are your guys' respective incomes? Um, I make about 80 and Jill's about 35. Okay. All right. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and and um, and run some numbers. And then you guys can tell me if any of this makes sense, because all of this has to fit in the budget. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. And the second thing is, are you guys OK with me and me being like super direct and straightforward, not beating around the bush? I prefer it that way. It doesn't seem fair to do it anything otherwise. Is that OK with you guys? That's that's perfect. It's how we like it. OK, cool. So now I'll just get into the quotes. OK, and, and typically what I'll do here, if they're under 70, I'm always going to offer a mutual of Omaha is accidental, no matter what. Okay. And the reason for ask, it's really important not to forget to ask the height and weight because several times, or you will run into where you run into somebody that's 
Well, no, I don't take any medications. Okay, cool. No smoking. Um, what's your height and weight? Um, 5'8", 460. And he's 46. So now, now my options, I still have two. Fortunately, I can do Aetna because they have no weight table. And I can do an accidental death. Okay, and then I'll combine those two. Right? Yeah. And, and the thing is, I, I, I just ran into that. I just had a point right before this. And she uh -huh. was 41 and she was... 360 right so you're too young for final expense like an Aetna that doesn't have a weight chart and terms are all about height and weight so i automatically had to go accidental but right mortgage was only 172 but you know you you talk up the value of it and usually you can get people to buy the half million because you're like hey you know most people go the half million because it's so inexpensive for this so most of the time i get people to max it out and then at least the premium after both of them was like 120. So, yeah. Well, the thing is with the accidental, I got that knocked down. So if I'm talking to, I don't care who it is, um, you know, and if they live in a Northern state where we get snow, I'll just say, Hey, look, I've got a, I'm in good shape. So, uh, and I'm all over the place. We've got ice and snow here in Idaho. You live in North Dakota, you get ice and snow. I got deer and elk all over the place. And, and so I've got a half a million dollars on me. And the fact, here's the facts, is that the leading cause of death from age zero to 44 is from an accident. And there's a good chart. If you don't have it, I can get it to Ryan. He may have it, but there's a cool visual chart. If you're doing Zoom meetings or you want us to send it to the client, it, there's, a, there's a table that shows the actual unintentional deaths, which is accidents from age zero to 44 is the leading cause of death. From 45 to mid 60s, it's still the number three leading cause of death. Okay, so that's the probability, and you're pretty healthy. Are you active? If they say, I had one guy say, No, I really don't. I just sit on the couch. And I'm saying, Well, then this may not be for you, unless you've got a basement and you fall down the basement once in a while, like I did a couple months ago. <laughs> um, but the other cool thing with the accidental for anybody that's 50 or under, they get their money back. So, in essence, it's a savings account with free insurance. Okay, so I'll use my son, Alex, who's on here today. And, I, and I'll use that example all the time. I said, yeah, my son, who's in his mid-30s, had a baby a couple of years ago, second grandbaby. I'm like, awesome. But I said, son, you don't have any insurance, bro. And I said, if something happens to you, grandpa, which is me, is going to be now become financially responsible for your kid. And that's okay, I guess, but not when you make 70 grand a year or whatever the case may be. He, so he started off with his budget with an accidental. Now he's got like five different policies, including an IUL, right? But he ended up putting half a million on him, half a million on his wife. And he, if he doesn't die, he gets all the money back. So he says, yeah, dad, this is great. It's a savings account with free insurance. Yes. So that's the way you sell accidentally. You should sell every time that. Okay. And that is an add-on. So let's let's get back yes. to let's sell some full coverage term and let's hear your pitch. Okay. So we've gone through all the medical. How do you pitch us? We got a 59, a 48. You know, yeah, and he's he's had a heart attack, so that's going to make it a little tougher, right? And so, in this particular case, you know, she's no problem. I probably want to do an IUL, maybe a move IUL for her. Okay, that's going to give the best value. So, so I tend to talk in terms of um, a permanent solution if they're under sixty. Okay, okay. Let, let's do that. Let's take away the heart attack. There is some carriers that, as long as the heart attack was over ten years ago, you're okay. That's why I was trying to right. set. Up. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. That's true. But let's, um, let's hear your IUL pitch. <clears throat> so then, so I'll, so I'll say we're going to do an A and a B. I like to focus to A and B. And so what we're going to do, Ryan, is we're going to we're going to do an A option, a B option, and what we're going to look at is either A or B or a combination of the two. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so we've already discussed. Let's normally what I like to do is talk about a permanent solution or. The, the term product, which it could be a regular term or the accidental, which has a term on it. And all, and if I need to, and I can tell they're not grasping it, I'll explain what term is. It means you only have it for a certain period of time. Right? Let's role play out. This is live role play. Okay. Right. okay. Great character. Okay. So we're sitting here. I'm 59, no heart attack, blood pressure, cholesterol. We, we qualify both for term. We got 59, 48. Pitch me on it. Okay. So, so Ryan, we're going to do a couple of different options here. We're going to do an A and a B. Okay, you got your pen and paper, right? Got it. Okay, so first, first thing for A, I want you to write down permanent. Okay. okay so it means it doesn't end. It's going to be a permanent solution. 
So like you already indicated, you have insurance through work. At some point, that's going to end. So when you retire or whatever the case, that's not going with you. So if you like the idea of having a permanent solution that's yours for the rest of your life, then we're going to look at a permanent solution. B is an accidental policy. We already went on that, so I'm not going to get into the whole thing again. So let's run some numbers. So a permanent solution again ends. So then now I'm just going to go straight to the quote. This is going to, this is going to build up cash value. It's going to be a scenario where it lasts forever. And you have the option of taking money out for income when you do decide you're going to retire in at age 65, 70, whatever. Now, frankly, you're 59. That's really not going to be enough time to build up a ton of cash value. So it's not a perfect scenario, but it's still a better solution. It's a, it's a whole life policy on steroids, right? Because they're going to get a, be able to get a higher face amount and an affordable price. And, be, and it's probably going to get a rate of return of somewhere between five and 7%. Okay. And that's the IO Express. That's the IUL Express. Yeah. So it's simplified issue, right? All right so are you, going to, are you going to pitch me the 300,000, 200,000, 100,000? How do we figure out which amount? Well, okay. So this is a good rule of thumb. You told me you make 80 grand a year. So typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm watching for a three, five or a 7% of that income. Okay. So if they're making, if he makes 80 grand a year, uh, let's just say 5%. That's four grand divided by 12. That's, he can afford up to around 300 bucks a month. Okay. okay? So that's, that's what I'm going to shoot for on the, on the IUL. Now uh, that's his 80 grand. She makes 40. Then I'm going to do the same thing with her. So I'll, I'll kind of have an idea. So in his case, I might say, well, why don't we look at 150 grand? I don't know the number off my head. I'll probably uh, punch it in real quick just to see where we're at. And then I'll say, okay, so let's just, let's just do it real quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to it real quick. Okay, let me uh, pull it out. Dot com, I got the quote right here. So okay. that's pretty cool. So you, and then let's, let's get you pitching it in that confident way. So we're going to go to Mutual of Alma. Trying to, I lost my, yeah, okay. So you're pulling it up for us. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Sharing my screen. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. And we're going to the IUL Express. And then why I'm pulling this up, give us the pitch. You pitch it pretty simply. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So, uh, again, I want them to focus on the permanent side. Again, do you like the idea of having a permanent insurance into your 60s, 70s, and 80s? And I'll say, if I do six or eight of these appointments today, most of the people are um, in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And the challenge is, is that they're looking for insurance at an older age. And it's, it's two challenges. I mean, dude, I couldn't have done that any better. Did you see what that said? I said that 333 and it came out to 333. Um, so 280, right? So now I'm a little bit low, which so, is, which is right in here. So I'll come in, come in at $333 a month for, for you, Ryan. Okay. This is a permanent solution. It'll last forever. And then you have the ability to take money out as income when you retire tax-free, okay? That's one of the huge advantages of these uh, types of policies. The benefit is tax-free and the um, income that you take out of this is also tax-free. Okay, and we're gonna go female 48. Okay. To keep her premium, if she's making half, at around 150, right? Right, that's where we kind of want to be. There you go, so, same thing. One okay, so, so one, 144, Jill, and 333 for you. I mean, that's an, uh, a scenario where it should fit into your budget, but you got to tell me if it does or not. Is that, are we anywhere close? Is that in the wheelhouse, Ryan? I don't know. That 333 seems a little steep. I wasn't expecting it to be that much. Yeah, well, it's, it's a, this is a combination of an investment and protecting your family because right now you've got insurance just through work, okay? Which we know we've already agreed that that's going to go away at some point in time. And so this is a permanent solution that you can have after you retire and have the ability to take an income out of it. If three thirty now I I came up with that because three thirty three is five percent of your total income monthly, gotcha. so it's not it's not crazy out of the way. Gotcha. Okay. So what's plan is that? B? What's that? What's our plan B? Plan B is the accidental to add that on. Okay. Remember we talked about B was going to be the accidental. Okay, and then we can do a quote there. And then in a perfect world, what you do, Ryan, is you'd combine both of these together. Because again, we already discussed that the 
probability if something happens to you, it's going to be from an accident. Um, and, and there's a value proposition. The second thing is, is that this is the one policy I can put both you and Jill on. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So then how often do you sell both or how often do people go with just the accidental? Uh, sometimes they do, you know, they definitely do sometimes and they'll back it off. So it is what it is. Well, maybe, you know, it, that tends to happen more so when, um, it's a mortgage protection and they've just gotten in the house and they're trying to figure out all their bills. Right. And they're, they're hesitant to make too big of a commitment. So you'd but, say B is a half million accident down for one twenty six eighty eight. Yeah, but again, you got to understand it's a, it's just an accident only, so it doesn't cover. I mean, if you got a heart attack or or cancer or something like that, then it's not going to pay out. So now, what, that's why it's always best to have both of these combined together. Now, what if you're filling out the app and the and they say, um, <clears throat> you know, hey, why do I have to get my banking information? Um, they never say that. Okay. I, I literally never get that. Okay. I literally never get that. I take control. So let's say they say yes, right? Let's go. Let's start there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ryan. I just need about uh, about ten minutes for each application. Maybe fifteen. The accidental will go pretty fast. I always do the accidental first. Always, 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 because that's a hundred percent guaranteed that they're going to get it right. They don't have to qualify, right? And and where the other one. They may have left something out on the medical side and then it pops up and now it goes to underwriting or something like that. So at least I get the accidental locked in. So I'll do that. Plus that application only takes 10 minutes, literally. Okay. okay. So I'll get to that and I'll say, okay, I'm just going to uh, pull this up. And then I just start asking the questions. Um, I'll ask them their address, their full name, middle initial, go through the whole thing, right? And then when it comes time to get their banking, get, because I've already got their social security number. What do you need that for? Well, th th again, I, I'm telling you that if I do, I, that never comes up. They never do not give me their social security number. I don't know if it's the way I ask, whatever the case may be. Same thing with the banking. Who do you bank with? I bank with Wells Fargo. Okay, I'm just going to need the uh, routing number and social security number. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you need that for? Well, we're gonna we're gonna take this draft out monthly so you can pay for the insurance. I just flat out tell them. I mean, these days it's it's just it hasn't been an issue. I really don't get anybody telling me no. I really don't. And yeah, I think when people are getting it, you know, it's it's uh, coming off too salesy or wherever the case may be. I, I was getting it quite a bit early on, but then as I practiced more and more, I wasn't really getting it as much either. But I'm very direct up front. I tell them before I even go over options. Go, hey, we're gonna need your driver's license, your social, and your routing account number because we don't take debit cards because they're not secure. But you can't buy stuff with routing account numbers. That seems to be working really well. I don't have any issues. Yeah, no, for sure. If you tell them, I know Logan does that. He'll he'll tell them up front. I haven't had to do that. It's working for me. Um, but I think it's the mindset, and it's and it's you acting like you're the financial doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having that right tonality. You're not there to sell them. You're already assuming the sale. You know, if we look at his tone, he's already assuming it. He's very chill. He's like, "Yeah, I'm here to here to help you out." He, when he's pitching a one, you know, three hundred thirty-three dollar premium, is there any nervousness in his voice? No, it's like, "Yeah, it's three thirty-three because it's a permanent plan." You know, it's well, it's it. a permanent plan, and I know it's five percent of his income. I know he can afford that. Okay. okay. I love it. The flip out on the other side. I had a guy one time. It was two hundred fifty-two dollars a month, and it was an AIG policy, but he goes, I go, he made 750 bucks a month. I said, you can't, he wanted 20,000 to protect his son. I said, that's not going to work. He says, here's why it'll work. I have $2,000 cash in the bank and I don't pay any rent. And he, he, he talked me into it. The guy's never missed a payment in like three years. Oh, wow. Wow. I love it. All right. Let's get to some questions out. Let's get some questions here. All right. All right. Um, Dr. B asks, how does he emotionally, how does he use emotional intelligence to evaluate deeper level in order to discern what they really want and need? You just got to ask them, right? If, if you're, if you're trying to, I mean, from experience, you already know um, the options that we have and what they're looking for. It's either a final expense policy. It's based on medical. It's based on income, right? 
how old they are, right? Because if we're going to do, it's a lot easier to do an IUL or a return a premium scenario if they're younger, right? They get their money back. That's an easy sell. If they're older, typically we're going to run into a scenario where they have medical issues and now we have to get them qualified. Okay, so you got to go through the underwriting, whether you're using your own experience or using the underwriting genie or your upline to determine that. Okay, but um, it's about asking who the beneficiary is. Okay, what does it look like if you don't walk in the door tomorrow for your wife and kids or whatever the scenario is? So you have to, what does that actually look like? Mm -hmm. And then you shut up. Yep. And I think just you get better through repetition. You know, you start to be able to evaluate just through trial and error of having people you don't close, the cool ones you do close, and you start picking up on stuff as you just get more deeper into it. Right. Uh, Justin says, how does an introvert be good in this business? Practice, man. And, um, you know, it's important to, I don't know, man, when I started out cold calling uh, at Smith Barney, the brokerage firm, that, and we used, we called out of the yellow pages. So, um there was a there was a switch that went on. My son Alex can attest to that. There's been a few times in my life where you're right there and you're right there and you're right there, and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, the switch goes on. If you can figure out how to turn the switch on, that you cannot be stopped. Period. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, and I think the switch is you stop caring about the results and you just do your job. <laughs> so that's the switch it's like you you know i think there's that all that nervousness behind your tone is like man i gotta make a sale i gotta make a sale and they can read it on you that you're just being needy you're just caring about you instead of talking about something that's very obvious right yeah and you got commission breath if you're doing that i think repetition to answer your question is just repetition having a schedule and being very consistent with it I get a question a lot. What about the emotions of having a bad week or whatever? I, I literally can tell you that that does not bother me at all. Okay. Or like Sean says the other day, uh, somebody asked me the other day, well, how do you deal with burnout and all this? I mean, I don't, I, I'm like Sean, I don't know what that means. I literally don't know what that means. I'm on the phone uh, doing what I need to do. I do my six or eight appointments a day and I squeeze in all the recruiting calls in between. And I can talk to a bunch of people throughout the day, but I'm on the phone. I'm up early, you know, work out and do what I'm supposed to do, man. I go to work. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we get paid to move our mouse. That's what this job is. <laughs> so you yeah. can be hitting a hammer or you can move your mouth. <laughs> we get paid to talk. Yeah. The more you talk, the better you get. Um, <clears throat> Amber asks, do you usually, uh, actually Joe asked a good one. Yes, he says, I like his script and Ryan's, but I start to get overwhelmed with all the different ways because there's lots of different ways to do this. What's, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, definitely keep, keep it simple, stupid. So um, part of what really helped me on the telesales was Ryan and his script and his format. I tended to resonate a little bit better with Ryan and the way he, he did his appointments. Um, but then I incorporated my own personality or whatever and practice and all that. So I think it's a matter of keeping it simple, giving them a couple of options. That's what I do. Nat DiCarlo doesn't give options. He, he tells them exactly what he thinks that they should have. And that's, that's even more direct, which is probably a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's keeping it simple. Don't have 50 carriers, have a couple, two, three. I know that's one of the things that Ryan does. He was big on having a couple, two, three carriers. I mean, I had somebody the other day wanting to get some off the wall carrier. And I'm like, why? Nobody, I haven't written one at policy with them ever. So you don't need to. I mean, you got Americo, they got term products, they got payment protector, and they got Eagle Premier. Yep. Okay. Mutual Bomb House has two or three. You got Aetna for, for a couple, two, three things. Outside of that, yeah, I've been doing AMAM lately. I really like their EOPs are super quick and fast. And then their underwriting department's really lenient and cool and easy to do amendments. And right. Stuff. And that's been the challenge with Aetna. So, I mean, because Aetna is, Aetna is super nice because they have a security question. But unfortunately, a lot of their stuff's going to underwriting now. I yeah. Mean, we can't have that. I just started, I said, I love their EOPs. It's so fast. But then once you get good at the AMAM, it's really quick. And then the signature process is really easy for the client. So just like, right. So, so the only time you're going to use Aetna is if they don't have an email and they're, they got a weight problem yep. or they've got COPD. 
Yeah, so, exactly. And if, if I have 50% of them getting declined with Aetna versus my lower, a little bit lower comp, I'd rather go with something that's getting approved right away. So. 100%. Yeah, and it's cool when you have one carrier where you're writing all your terms and all your whole life's so makes you having to work a lot easier too. But you know, to answer your question, Joe, on that side, you know, the reason why we do these live role plays is not for you to keep changing it up, right? I would recommend sticking to the rush freestyle that's written for someone new to understand all the basics. And then, you know, as you're going through that and getting better and better and better, and you're starting to write 5K a week or protect five people a week, you're going to naturally start to develop your own style. But what the wrong thing to do is to start off with your style. So the reason why these doing all these interviews of live role plays is that as you're going through and doing and starting to make money with a certain style or the structure of the rush freestyle, eventually you can add in little parts of Al or someone from like Candy or someone like we had last week on, you know, all the different people we have on here to get ideas to kind of start to mold and develop your own little style. But when you're brand new, stick to one style and one presentation start to finish until you start making protecting at least five people a week then start implementing some other different things but i also want you guys to notice that the tonality between all the people we've had on live role plays is always the same there's no neediness they're very confident they're very assumptive they're very like hey, everyone's going to buy a policy and they're asking if they want a policy or not they're asking them which policy do they want Right. Every right. single and, and that's because they feel they filled out a form. <laughs> yeah, they filled out a form. They already asked for it. We just got to figure out which one they want, right? Which one they can afford. And that's the switch, the perspective switch. Just stop going, oh, I need to be this dirty, you know, sales guy that's calling up and trying to convince them to get life insurance so I can make money. That's where we all start, right? You got to knock that out of your head and be like, oh no, wait, I'm calling people that already asked for coverage. I got to figure out which policy works best for them. That's the switch. Right, the yep. switch, right? Um, so I think that's that was a good good question. Amber says, do you usually give them um, the accidental with ROP? I think that's a yes. Anyone below fifty, always, right? Always. Joe, I don't said, even offer the I don't offer the other one um, if they're under fifty. I only offer it with ROP. You know, and the the Foresters one's pretty cool too. It has disability. It's not available in all the states, but the Forester accidental goes up to half a million, and you can add two thousand dollars disability. And some states do have a ROP on that one too. So it's, it's I'll have like, to check that out. You know, the I, don't know. I didn't know that. See, that's why these things are great. You learn something new every day. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we join our meetings. Prepared accidental too with foresters. Okay. Uh, the only disadvantage is you can't do husband and wife on the same one, but some states have ROP up to 65. Okay. All the way wow. to 65, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right, Joe Silva asks, but if you get a 59 year old IULE, it's only guaranteed for 20 years or age 80, whichever is first. So then at age 80 has nothing to nothing and too expensive to get a new policy. I think the GUL is better, can set up to 121. I'm talking about the foresters, I think, guaranteed UL. Do you know anything about that? I'm 60. I don't. Um, I just, you know, again, in most cases, if we're doing someone that age, we're really doing an apples to an apples whole life scenario versus the IUL. So we're already assuming that that person's pretty healthy. And mm -hmm. so because if they're not, we can't do an IUL. It's going to have to be a final expense product. And so if they're pretty healthy, then we can at least get, like I said before, an, uh, a final expense whole life policy on steroids. Mm -hmm. So it's just still going to perform better than anything else. And keep in mind, Joe, when you look, when it says guarantee, that means like if the market did zero gains for the next 30 years, <laughs> they're guaranteeing it will last for that long. So they have to put that in there. Like guarantee if the market was terrible forever, this is what it would last to. But typically that, that's a, and, and yes, you shouldn't, I don't think you should focus on the guaranteed levels. I mean, the reason the stock market is, is a good thing is because it goes up 75% of the time, okay? But it could be one of those scenarios where we're in that 25% scenario. But has the market gone down straight for 20 years? Um, I don't think ever that I know of. I mean, the worst, obvious worst okay. period was in the Great Depression. Yeah, so the first step here is do not sell IULs, do not sell annuities if you can't sell at least five people a week. Okay, let's get your simple issue basics down, your bread and butter, the simple stuff, whole life lasts forever, term lasts for length of time, 
accidental spam, if you have an accident, focus on that. Once you get that down, start doing some research on these advanced things. But if you're brand new and you haven't sold anything yet, you do not need to be going down the rabbit hole. Well, and and one, one way you can get around it, okay, to, to not go there, okay, and again, the, the easiest one, the fastest for whatever, for sure, is, is the Americo, right, with um, the, the CBO, okay? But one thing that is cool about the Moo TLE, Term Life Express, is that it gives you two options. So it does have a permanent solution in there, even though it's a term, because you either get to choose your money back or you can convert it to a paid up policy. Therefore, it's a permanent policy, right? So that's a that's a pretty easy sell too. And then that's a simplified issue and it's that's an easy one and it's competitive. And what he's talking about guys is on the on anything with return of premium, technically always is automatically a universal life policy. So if you're writing an ROP, it's a, it's universal life. But if we do look at, I don't like mutual Boma because I think their software is slow and I'm all about speed to like help more families out in a quicker amount of time. So I try to avoid them. And I'm not happy with them on some other things that happened recently, but you know, we can kind of see if we do. No, I don't, I don't, and I'm not disagreeing with you either. So, but the, in certain scenarios, this, it's too bad the other ones don't have this because there's an example where it's a paid up, you get the choice. You either get, and they tell you what it is. So you don't have to punch it in a calculator. <clears throat> so the RO, ROP is 42. Or yeah. you can take that and buy a pay, paid up policy and never make another payment again. And you have 99 grand for the rest of your life. Yeah. <clears throat> and most of the carriers are going to have a single premium policy to convert. So if you do have an ROP on Americos, you can say, hey, what if I, if you keep all that, how much can you convert that to a single premium paid up policy? So, but yeah, just has it built right in guys, 117 a month, you can get the money back or it converts to a permanent whole life policy for 99,000 the rest of your life. And that's yep. basically a, a, a term life express with the ROP turns it into a universal life product. So I want to keep ULs simple. It's the ROPs, RULs. All right. Any final questions, guys? Let's see if we're missing any. All right, cool. Well, hey, um, Al, I appreciate your time, man. I know you're busy, dude. Thank you yeah. for an example of kind of how you close. You're a winner. You're a scholar. Anytime you need me, man, a team call, FFL Grit. I love the name. That's what it's all about. Gotta okay, have brother. Appreciate you guys. Call me, anybody, if you need me. Yep. Thanks. See ya.